Cheers everybody, I'm Matt Hill. I'm with Night Fire Specialist here in beautiful Denver, Colorado. It is beautiful today. Cheers. Having a little coffee with my homie at the uh, Dave Rams in Wood Casa with a lot of snow on the ground. It, it was a big snowstorm yesterday, <laughs> not gonna lie. And, but it's so funny, we're so fragile now that like all our phones were saying, winter storm, winter storm. I'm like, it's February in Colorado and it was like four inches. Like what, what, do, they, what do they expect? I mean, they, on the one hand, they're angry about global warming and on the other hand, we don't like snow. So like pick a side, people. I, I've picked my side. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a little bit more pro oil and gas than I even was yesterday because as I was coming across the I-70 from parachute to Denver, I couldn't have imagined having an electric car or battling the weather like in this house without natural gas or just like if this house was powered by solar or wind. Could yeah, I mean, intermittent. I mean, the good the good news is at least in Colorado, as, as you see, like there's not a cloud in the sky. So when the sun's up, but the I mean the sun's very flat. We have trees. It it would be a hard one to totally power this house. And and I, I believe the number, and and you can fact check me, but I'm pretty sure in order to fully take this house off the grid with solar panels, I would need a hundred twenty thousand dollar Tesla wall, plus forty thousand dollars minimum of solar panels to get the sixty kilowatts that I need. And then I have to replace the panels after 15 or 20 years and the batteries run out and the supply chain issues are you can't even get the batteries. So like it's, it's, it's truly amazing how hope is a plan has become the energy policy of our country. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here. We, uh, I don't know. It seems affordable to me. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's great. I mean, I actually don't care about poor people, so I'm going to be fine. But, but boy, the people who like, you know got us the coffee and yeah. work in the stores and you know the people like they're gonna be angry a little bit and um but fortunately we'll just freeze their bank accounts take away their crypto and the government will protect us right we were talking about that earlier so and and i am a little bit aware of what's going on in canada right now with the whole you know and everybody you know in oklahoma say for instance i wake up and i say oh there's a bunch of truckers in canada right now protesting the mask mandate yeah. but you're hyper aware of what's going on up there you you know grew up in canada yeah. so a little bit more about that for everybody watching. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's super interesting. So so Canada is obviously more of a socialist, left leaning country. Um, the way I differentiate the whole thing has been, um, generally speaking, Republicans are individualist and Democrats are collective good. Okay. But the most left of the Democrats in the U.S. are still to the right of Canadian politics, okay. because and so as a result, it's a very compliant, very. Um, collective good, social good society. The greater good society. And so um, what this started from was on January 18th, the U.S. stopped allowing Canadian truckers to enter the U.S. Uh, with without being vaccinated, even though the entire time in the two years pandemic and these people are sitting in cabs by themselves, um, even though the entire times they were they were exempt. And then, then on January 22nd, they went back the other way. And so they're, they're protesting vaccine mandates. Yikes. So they drove from Vancouver, they drove to Ottawa, they parked. I mean, everyone's seen them on, like, they're as, as peaceful as you possibly can. So, like, we wanted to describe the BLM protests as mostly peaceful. The Canadian ones have been entirely peaceful. And then there were people, like, waving Confederate flags and Nazi symbols or whatever. But that could have been, like, I, I could show up. Plant. I could show up at an AOC rally and wave. I mean, like, so we have to be realistic. But they had bouncy castles. They've been self-policing. Um, it's been extraordinarily peaceful. And they wouldn't leave. But Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, took a position that he called them a fringe minority, called them terrorists, called them misogynists, called them racist. So he made it so that he couldn't even talk to them. So they've been there for three weeks, and now um, they'll be debating in the House of Commons today, Thursday, February, what are we, 17th? Um, the Emergency Measures Act, which is the first time since 1970 when his dad was Prime Minister that they implemented basically the War Measures Act, which is allowing them to uh, take people's bank accounts. Uh, they doxed some of the people that had donated through this charity site. And so he's going full on authoritarian dictator. Authoritarian dictator. And, and what's actually been amazing is Canadians who are compliant, they were 63% in favor of vaccine mandates at the beginning of this. They're now down to 53%. And with the War Measures Act, as other countries are reducing, like they're getting off passports, they're getting off mandates, they're getting off masks, they're opening up and Canada's cr cracking down. It's going to be, it's a fascinating thing to watch. Um, but we have to hope it fails because governments are taking more and more control in all these countries. And, and for us, it's fascinating for them. Like we live here. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But, but look at what's going on in the U.S. Look at censorship. Like yeah. I, I used the Alex Berenson versus Twitter uh, case, a lawsuit in California where Twitter deplatformed Alex Berenson for saying something as shocking as the vaccines aren't working and sharing real data from a perspective. And I was reading the book, um, The Cod uh, Coddling of the American Mind. Um, 
And they talk about without dissent, without discussion, without argument, we become weaker. And what social media has done through these tech companies is they've they've quelled dissent. So it makes it sound like millions of people are saying all the same thing, but it's because the millions of people who are saying the other thing are being deplatformed and quelled and silenced. And so as a society, we're not having the benefit of true debate. And I think climate change, so tying back to Fossil Fuel Friday, um, you know, climate change is the science is settled. And, and if it's not, settled. it's not settled. And if listeners have a chance, they should listen That's to That's what the, science is. It's never settled. Never settled. And, and I mean, there's lots of discussion around the 97% of scientists believe this, but 270 people that were medical professionals sent a letter to Spotify about Joe Rogan's misinformation. And most of them weren't doctors, you know, uh, Albert Barola, Bar Barella, the, the CEO of Pfizer is a veterinarian. So like, what, what are, what are we talking about? But so on climate change, I think, uh, the Steve Coonan episode with Joe Rogan is, is two hours that's worth your time. And he goes through, he wrote a book called unsettled and he goes through all of the math and the science and, and that are there issues? Yes. Are humans adding to CO2? Yes. Is it a catastrophe? No. And until we have that debate and discussion and understand the trade-offs, the United, United Kingdom has gas prices up 54%, energy companies are going bankrupt, people are going bankrupt that can't afford to live in climates like this without fossil fuels. With the most ab available abundant energy source ever due to all of the amazing science that oil and gas people have done, that should not be happening. No, it shouldn't be happening. And, and trying to take away capital for companies who are providing energy. If we want to talk about scarcity, if we want to talk about transition because they're scarce, City. Let's do that. But I was visiting with a guy yesterday at lunch and, and their company's working on hydrogen. 95% of the hydrogen in the world is made from natural gas. You take a huge amount of electricity to break methane up into hydrogen, which you then burn as though it's natural gas. You might as well skip the step and just use methane. Yeah. It's, it's, we, we are in a narrative and, and until discussion comes back, our country is weak. And that's why I think Canada is super interesting is will the populace rise up and say, I'm done being censored. I'm done being told I'm done being protected. Let's use our minds and common sense. 100%. We have that. Hey, uh, before we go, uh, let's always mention the, the amazing people that are uh, feeding us each day. Uh, tell me a little bit about what Hitachi's doing. Yeah, so I'm still, still working with Hitachi. Um, we are a digital modernization solutions company. Work with the very large companies to help, you know, whether it's implement ERPs or digital um, upgrades on, on old analog systems. We, we help design custom solutions for companies so that they can use their data better. I mean, that's great. I mean, on and on, these companies, if, if we do get capital from investors, we're, we're going to have to be efficient with we our money. We don't need capital anymore. Oil's 95, baby. <laughs> there you go. We're, we're going to see a bunch of rigs in the air, and uh, everybody's going to be fat and happy. Well, we hope so. Um, great to see you, man. Man, God Thanks bless you. Uh, how do people get a hold of you? Uh, you can always email me, drw at hottakeoftheday.com. Uh, follow me on LinkedIn and sign up for Substack. I think Substack. Sub Substack is the new media platform that I think displaces not the old Getter. media. So Getter, I've not been happy with Getter. Yeah. I got to be honest. It's it's more of an echo chamber than even like if you it were in not, a, I mean, if I you mean. were in a room yelling at yourself and no one else was there. That's kind of Getter. And it's my kind of place sometimes. It makes me feel good. <laughs> yeah, if it's padded, I like it too. Um, but no, so I think Substack is is really the way of the future. A lot of independent writers have left the the big media corporations like the New York Times that are pushing a narrative. And Substack is allowing a whole bunch of ideas to come to light. And I, I strongly encourage. Crazy. This. Amazing freedom of speech. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. First Amendment's a thing. <laughs> Y'all take care. God bless. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. even need second takes anymore we're so good at this <laughs>